it's just a little video, it's just there. Uh, I'm just working on this <coughs> pip. Just to give it a bit of a service. I'm not really going to be shooting it for the next couple of weeks. Take isolation seriously, obviously. Uh, day off, <coughs> day off work today anyway. Just going to be taking all grease off the pins and stuff like that, the hinge pins. and Especially on the barrel flats. I'm going to be taking this all grease off. Because after a while it becomes more than a brace of anything else. So, I start with the <coughs> barrel flats. Barrel flats. Barrels are nice and clean there. The only thing I don't really need to look at today is the actual barrels. It's how it didn't remove at some point. Really nice barrels. And <coughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I put a post on about this gun. It's with the serial number, which is all matching on every part of the gun. It's uh, allegedly 109 years old. It's just a pip. 109 years old. I reckon. That's what it says, serial number wise. It's all matching serial numbers. So, hopefully, by doing stuff like this, I'll keep the gun working another 100 years. Or at least in some form of condition where you can actually hold it and maybe fire it once in a while. I don't, I, I'm adamant the barrels have been refinished at some point. At some point in its life. Because the rest of the gun, if I show you it up close, the action itself is really patinaed. There's a nice little bit of engraving just around the scroll. A lot of waves. Might straighten that pin on. Nice bit of engraving, but not too flashy. It would have been probably colour case hardened from the factory. It's had a bit of a break. It's quite a serious break, that as well, but it works and it hasn't splintered on me yet. So it belongs to keep that. On a local estate for many many years, I know that, and I'm, I'm guessing it was probably his family's before that, or it might have been given to him by the estate. So, so what I'm doing is just taking off some of the bit of corrosion in there, just try to give it a bit more of a clean up and service. I, I keep, me, I'm quite good at keeping my guns clean and well serviced, and so on. But with stuff this old, you just need to put a bit more thought in it, to be honest. Just give it a bit of a... No way am I trying to ever go into the store just to like mirror polish or anything like that. It suits the patina very well. It's, it's worked itself. It's worked into itself, I suppose. I'm just trying to get some of the thick rust away. I don't think I'm going to get all of it off with this fine wool, but just take the thick off. It's, that's just from rubbing it down. Oh, it must be only about five minutes. So as you can tell, I'm trying to use this timing doors to keep my gear in good nick, to be honest. So maybe just a... Uh, well, there's I put them aside and clean up the the action itself. Just try to keep this in camera. Nice piece of wood on it. Sorry about the glare. I'm just doing this in the shed, but nice bit of fiddle back. Movable. It's been revised at some point because the check runs smooth. The four ends the same. Four ends the same. I reckon that's a bit of buffalo in there. Actually, given the age of the gun, it can't be. I can't reckon it'll be synthetic. But it's obviously been near paint at some point. There's specks of paint all over it. See how full it's. That's as good as it's going to get. Because what a lot of people don't realise is you can grease up the working components of a gun to stop abrasion and stuff like that, but after a while it builds up particles and dust out the air itself 
and it becomes a, a mild abrasive, which is just counterintuitive to the reason why you put crease on it, to be honest. But also, there's a lot of grime in this trigger guard as well. A little bit of rust pitting and stuff. But what can you do? It's a dare trip up, it's a three byte system. Put the cross pin at the top. It's an absolutely fantastic gun, this. Only two and a half inch chambers, man, given the age. But like I say, it's all matching, all made in Newcastle. That's probably all this. Might try and take the fall out of the piece now and just give that a bit of a clean because it's often overlooked the uh, fore end. Unfortunately, there's been a screw with place of a wood screw. The original pin seems to be missing from that hole. But try and take this to bits. Whenever taking things to part in your gun, especially the old ones, always use parallel ground or hollow ground turn screws, not industrial screwdrivers for woodworking, always these types. The way the slot's made is that it has to fit. If you're trying to put a, a the fence of a modern screwdriver, I don't have one to show. But the concept is, <coughs> why is there like hollow ground so they become parallel to a certain point? in the taper, <coughs> a modern screwdriver is tapered more like that, flat. So when you put it in, it, it's only actually biting into the slot of the pin very in, very uh, weakly. It's not filling out the slot itself. So, we'll try and get one that fits as well. This one, unfortunately, looks like it's been taken up bad with some Household screwdrivers, and that's a modern screwdriver. No advertisement, by the way. I might try and get a new pin made for this one. The only noises are obviously people in their gardens, given the circumstances. I'm trying to find a pot for this. Always to keep your screws in pots because you will lose them. It'll be expensive to get that made again. You can always do it on a clean workbench. It's a bit grubby this one, but there's no hard particles or metal filings, which I find are the worst. See, it just fits on by. It's just a friction fit because it's not an ejector. It doesn't really need a, a securing latch of any sort. It's, and it's not an ejector, so it's quite a simple system, to be honest. I'd say just give it a bit of clean side. There's a bit of grime and so on in there. Old grease, it's so thin. Keep the woodwork safe. Yeah. Also, I'll take the time to ask any subscribers or followers on Instagram how you is uh, dealing with the isolation. What are you doing to get through this time of being stuck at home? Unfortunately, I, I'm fortunate enough that I can actually go to work, given the job description and stuff like that. And I'm not stuck in the house 24/7, which is which would be bad for me because I, I get bored of being stuck in the house for, after a while. Uh, we're actually watching a couple of videos on YouTube on should people should shoot as stay at home during this time, and I was surprised to see a lot of them agree that we should be staying at home instead of going out shooting. Which to some someone some people might be surprised by this opinion, but I don't think. It would affect the general population if someone who went shooting went out with a gun to do a bit of pest control here and there in the fresh air away from 
for other people to be honest because how many of you find yourself bumping into large numbers of people while out shooting and uh, I know I don't and especially if you live in rural areas I can't imagine a more safer way to get through this problem than being out with a gun or a fishing rod in solitude if it's alright for people like me to go to work where I'm rubbing shoulders with people all day and handling money and so on and handling food as well that it should be a bad thing for someone to go out and not about with a gun for a couple of hours in solitude I can't. if people are allowed to go out and exercise at least once a day in public areas like in cities and town centres and stuff that surely someone with a, who enjoys field sports should be able to go out with a gun fair enough if you live in more heavy populated areas and so feel free to stay in the house it's safe, that's, that is a safer and sensible thing to do just near us in the garden so let's keep the voices down so that's just my opinion on the the whole thing to be honest is that if you if you can go out with a gun where there's no one there and you're in the fresh air i believe that's a sensible thing to do to be honest so we're just taking all the grime off this you see actually some of the colour case hardening is coming back through as well which is hiding under some grime it's a bit claggy in this shed to be honest and something to get a bit of sweat on but places like that you've got grease things like that you don't want that building in there for too long so we're just cleaning all that out She's in the house, champion. We're going to start talking a bit more like normal people. Got a bit of grime stuck in there. <laughs> Seeing that. Look how poor this is. A bit of grime and stuff in there. I'm just using the turn screw to try and drive some of this out in all fairness I do believe people who go out in large groups in public areas during this problem are, are extremely irresponsible to be honest I think that's extremely irresponsible and I see someone going out for a couple of hours by themselves with a fishing rod or a tarp to go do some bushcraft or a gun in areas where there's very little people and people know to stay away from each other and sort of respect personal space and hygiene and stuff like that that I should be allowed people like me and other should, I should be allowed or not judged for going out with a gun where there's very little human interaction anyway no fairness it's obviously a personal choice um, if I got the chance to go out shooting by myself during this problem I was not, I, I, I was confident I wouldn't have to go through any public areas or more travelled areas, so I should say, like footpaths and things. I wouldn't turn it down because I don't really think there's much there's as much of a risk as going out and doing a daily jog in a public area. I think there's more risk of contaminating someone during a, a jog once a day than it is going out into a field for going for a couple of hours and rolling a few rabbits over, to be honest, or going out with a ferret or a dog or a fishing rod I really can't imagine it being much of a problem but obviously it's a personal opinion some people be judged I'm sure some people might completely disagree with that idea but I think it's actually not that bad to be honest I really don't think it's that bad obviously people who live in heavily populated areas should stay indoors it's, it's only sensible in all fairness all over the shop. I've left the oily rag I normally use for these parts in the house. You never you never really want to put too much oil on metal parts and guns. It's just a thin coat. Too much oil leads to it running into the stock and it actually causes the stock to rot eventually. 
I want you to stop the rot. You get the black patches there. Uh, once I put the four in together, I'll see if the, this one's got it. I don't think it does. I know the greener, I've got a, a greener JP in the house, which is definitely suffering from over oiling because you can see it. So we're just trying to keep the any grease uh, oils off our hands, off the metal work, because we don't really want it rusting, to be honest. So. I'm definitely have to get a new pin for this replace this screw because it really does not suit me. It looks a bit bodge job shape to be honest. Not gonna lie with this. Do always try and get the screws or the pins to line up north to south across, but that one won't tighten any more, and I don't want to leave it too loose that it possibly loosens the fore end off while shooting. Uh, I just I recently had an over runner that was doing that. The fore end was becoming wobbly because of the, the screw becoming loose. So let's skip that a bit of a iron down. That's after them. The bows and the action are nice and oiled. In all fairness, they just need a bit more grease. Nice amount of action. We're ready to just grease a bit this. Don't want too much grease. It's like the oil, you don't want too much grease on. I'm trying to see if there's any oil damage. It's a bit in there. It's a bit dark compared to the rest of the wood. It goes into a dark. It's just where the gun's been sitting up in the cabinet like that. And oil's ran through the headwork. You need to stop a bit. A bit around the bottom of the trigger guard. You need to remember the gun's 111 years old. Now, by going on 111, it's 110, I think. So we'll just make sure all this is clean. Busy, using some busy gun grease. Money cost is five or more or less, and they last for a very long time. You just want to be doing on the flats, a bit on the extractor work there, and your lugs. We'll just take a bit of the, any access that's went onto the metal work, the barrel blue. We'll just take that a bit, just take that off the drums. Don't want too much on. So that the oil don't want too much on, just enough. So 
it, it's just a bit on the action still on the bottom. Not too much. Just spread that out a bit. Not too much, just a little bit. A little bit on the lumps and the flats of the barrel. For 111 years old, it's doing exceptionally well. Lovely fun. Anyway. Just thought I'd do a quick video on there. Uh, just a bit of the service and just a bit of a chat to be honest and on what we could do as shooters and the issues everyone in all fairness everyone's coming up against on uh during this problem. So don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe and see you again.